Hey you guys, it's Britt. Tonight I wanted to jump on and talk to you about the Rachel Oates, Jimmy Snow, and Gabby Hanna situation. I had some thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so I'm going to try to break this down in a very simplistic way. I think that there are a lot of different moving parts, but today I want to focus specifically on Jimmy Snow inserting himself into a situation that he was not educated on, he did not care to educate himself on it, and my thoughts surrounding this situation with him. So if you guys don't know who Jimmy Snow is, I am actually, um, up until yesterday, one of his subscribers. I have temporarily unsubscribe from his channel because I just don't like how this is unfolding. It doesn't sit right with me. And when something doesn't sit right with me for a period of time, I make a decision and I made the decision to unsubscribe. I might resubscribe to him. I don't know what the future holds, but I don't like this. I don't like what I've been seeing lately. So I made the decision that was best for me. I am not telling you guys to subscribe or unsubscribe. However, I will give you my opinions about this situation and how I think that it was poorly handled. Right now, Jimmy does have about 398,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. He covers a lot of religious commentary. He talks about people like Paula Morgan, Girl Defined, a lot of political, kind of political stuff he'll sprinkle in. He also has this thing called The Sometimes Show. Not interested in that, at least for me. I was never entertained by it. I didn't think that it was something that I wanted to waste my time watching. But I have historically enjoyed some of his content. I have always enjoyed how he is able to articulate his thoughts. I think that he can take sometimes rather complicated situations and discuss them in a way that is easy to digest. And I've always liked that about his content. However, um, this situation I didn't like. So let's get into it. I have my notes. I watched his video last night at 1.75 times speed just so that I could get through it. It is 57 minutes and I did not have 57 minutes at 11 p.m. last night to dedicate to this. So I wanted to kind of fly through it. I was jotting my notes down. So if these are a little bit uh, scattered or out of order, I do apologize, but sometimes that's just the way that my brain works and I was jotting down these notes as I was listening and coming up with my thoughts. Last night, the comments and the like to dislike ratio was on on this video. I would like to update everyone that those are both now turned off. And to me, it doesn't matter what YouTuber does it. If a YouTuber puts out a video and is getting backlash and they end up turning off their like to dislike and their comments, I believe that that is a cowardly move. I don't like it. And I think that it is essentially telling your audience to shut up and that they don't have a voice on your channel. I've always said that within reason, I think that it's very important for subscribers to have a voice on a channel that they helped build. After all, channels are nothing without the subscribers watching and engaging in your content. And when you shut off a comment section on any video, that is not giving them their voice to allow conversations to be had or criticism to be delivered and as long as the criticism isn't being you know delivered with a bunch of profanities and personal attacks there's no reason why people shouldn't have a voice on a video that you are putting out this entire situation popped off because jimmy is friends with gabby hannah and rachel oates Rachel Oates is a book reviewer. She does a lot of book reviews on her channel. I do not follow her. However, I am familiar with sort of what her content is about as a general understanding. She is a book reviewer. That is the most simple way that I can give it to you guys. Now I have actually talked about Rachel Oates on my channel, I think only once before. I discussed her in the capacity of Gabby Hanna sending her her poorly written poetry book and Rachel giving it a review. Gabby did not like the review and has essentially just gone off the rails as far as, um, you know, being a really 
not nice person to Rachel, sending her subscriber and her fan base to echo her feelings as far as how she feels about Rachel giving her, you know, silly poetry book a not great review. For some reason, because Jimmy Snow is friends with both of these ladies, he decided to send Rachel Oates a note um, you know, through, I think it was through Instagram DM. It looked like a DM, not a text from the screenshots that he showed. And he inserted himself into this situation between Gabby and Rachel. My biggest question is why? Why would you ever throw yourself in the middle of a uh, conflict between two people that you consider to be friends? Now, I understand if you're doing this to protect, you know, someone's well-being or they're, you know, they're really going back and forth at it, like really, really bad. And you're worried about, uh, you know, physical harm being done to one of them. Then, you know, of course, like that's something a little bit different. But my biggest takeaway from all of this has always been Rachel is a book reviewer. She gave a review of a book that was sent to her and Gabby didn't like it. Where did reviewers lose their freedom to give an honest review? I don't understand this. I don't understand why it was taken so personally by Gabby Hanna. And I don't understand why you would send someone something, they don't like it, and you lash out at them. I don't get that. I'm, I'm truly confused, you guys. So Jimmy sending that note to Rachel is sort of a double-edged sword because not only did he throw himself in the middle of this and send Rachel a note basically trying to, in my opinion, it was trying to persuade her to change the way she reviews, change the way she speaks, changes the way that she says stuff. like. It was a very indirectly persuasive message from what I gathered. The other side of that sword is A, that's dumb, but B, he did not care to watch any of Rachel's videos on how she reviews, um, you know, print work, how she reviews anything that she has sent. He did not even look at her content to see okay, well, what is it that she's saying? Why is Gabby upset? Like, the whole thing of him just being, like, standing in the middle of this is so stupid to me, honestly. So you're not going to educate yourself, and then you're going to put yourself in the middle of this back and forth that these two women are having over a book review that Gabby Hanna doesn't like. I don't understand that. In this 57 minute video that he posted, to me, there were a lot of words, a lot of sentences, a lot of, you know, standing up for himself and bragging about how he knows how to argue and he, you know, is not wrong in this situation overall. But I didn't really have a lot of takeaways from this. It did not give me a reason to understand where he was coming from. I really walked away from it feeling like I was more, um, you know, if you want to say anyone's picking a side, I am definitely on Rachel Oates' side in this situation. I don't think that it was fair of him to put himself in the middle of this, and I don't think that it was fair of him to try to even remotely persuade her from the way that she creates content and the way that she reviews books. I don't like it. The other problem with him wanting to change the way that she does her reviews is even though he didn't even know what her reviews looked or sounded like, let's also remember that Jimmy Snow is someone who has reviewed books from Girl Define and Paula Morgan, and he has said in the past that he does not care about how these people feel about his review. So where is the logic here? Where is the logic to say a reviewer should have full freedom 
to not like something, tell people that they don't like something, and move on with their day. I don't understand. And I really don't want to point out the obvious here, but in the messages that he showed, I'll throw up a couple screen grabs here too, and you guys can pause to read them. It felt very much like a man trying to tell a woman how to do her job. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the, um, I didn't like the, you know, the tone. You can still gather tone from typed out words, at least I can. I, I don't know if everyone looks at it that way, but I can definitely pick out tone. And to me, it felt very much like he was trying to tell her how to, how to do her review or what not to say out of fear of hurting Gabby's feelings, even though he doesn't care about hurting other people's feelings when he has reviewed Girl Define, Paula Morgan, and even some of his commentary content could be looked at as you could be hurting this person's feelings if they are watching this video. He also bragged in this video about having controversial friends and, you know, he talked about being friends with Gabby and then also talked about having some very surprising controversial friends. And I don't think that that's something that I would be bragging about if I was friends with a public figure or, you know, an internet personality that was known to be problematic. I, A, wouldn't be friends with them, but B, I damn sure wouldn't ever get up on my channel and brag about it and say, oh, well, you guys, you wouldn't guess who I'm friends with. No, that speaks to your moral compass. Speaking of a moral compass, I do think that for him to still publicly say that he is friends with Gabby Hanna says a lot about his moral compass, moral code as well. You know, so much has come out about Gabby. She has proven herself to be extremely toxic, very vile, and extremely problematic. So to sit on your channel and say, I'm right and I'm still friends with Gabby Hanna, I, I do believe that that is going to contribute to his drop in subscribers. And by the way, he is still losing subscribers as of today. And I don't think that it's gonna slow down. It might plateau, but I do think that this just makes him look very dumb. I don't think that the intentions were bad per se, but the way that it's being handled right now in this video that came out yesterday is not the way that it should be handled. He also opened this video by reminding everyone that YouTube is his full-time job. He has people that he employs, so he was only addressing this and doing the video because YouTube is his full-time job. I always think that Certain things can drop down a YouTuber's um, integrity a few pegs, and I think coming onto your channel and saying, I am only addressing this because YouTube is my full-time job, could have been not said, and it would have shaken out a little bit better for him because now you're telling people that you don't really care about this situation, you care about the bottom line dollar, and you care about how many subscribers you have because your subscribers equal dollars to you. And I don't think that's a good look. You don't have to state the obvious. People already know that you're a full-time YouTuber. So by reiterating that and saying that you're only gonna do this because of that is just super tacky in my opinion. If you guys subscribe to Jimmy, you'll know exactly what I mean when I say this. He is a very skeptical person, and I think that that's what has gained him the audience that he has. You know, I like skeptical people. I like people that can look at things with, um, you know, a little bit of a critical eye and kind of dig through the facts and deliver the information and let's have a conversation about it and let's get different points of views on it and talk about it. I enjoy that and I hope that I do that, you know, for, for you guys as well. I want to look at things with a critical eye and talk about it. You know, so knowing that he has pegged himself as such a skeptical person, 
then knowing that he sent Rachel Oates a text to try to persuade her to do something different, but not looking at her content and not educating himself and just throwing himself in the middle of this, it does make me wonder, what about all of the content on his channel? Is there that trust anymore? Were your videos as well-researched as you portrayed them to be? That's what I really wonder, because you have shown that you will throw yourself in the middle of something without properly digging into it. So what about all of the videos that are so full of information? Was it really information or was it just opinions that weren't what were not well researched and thrown onto your channel? And on top of getting rid of his like to dislike and shutting the comments off, over on his subreddit, he is also blocking and deleting people that are calling him out. And that again goes back to kind of a big slap in the face to your subscribers and your fan base by taking away their voice. If a YouTuber does not allow, if a YouTuber does not allow people to have a voice on their platform, they will have a voice on someone else's platform. And you can see this right now by his video that went up. His subscribers are now on other commentary channels giving their opinions because their voice was taken away from expressing it to him directly. I just truly really don't understand why reviews are having people in such a uh, pickle right now. I really don't understand that. If you come out with a product, whether it's a book or a skincare product or a household cleaning product or a car washing product, if you send that product to someone that reviews those types of products, let's just say I was coming out with an eyeshadow palette and I sent it to a hundred influencers that review makeup for a hobby or for their job or whatever it is, it doesn't even matter. If that's what they do and someone doesn't like my eyeshadow palette, then that is their freedom to express that they don't like my eyeshadow palette. Reviews are good for customers, they're good for the company, and I look at influencers and YouTubers as companies. At the end of the day, if you are putting out uh, products, if you're putting out videos, whatever it is that you're putting out to the public, they are up for scrutiny. And that's what I always say, I kind of look at critical comments, let's just say that you're talking about an influencer or a YouTuber that doesn't have any product that they're selling. They're putting out videos, that's it. If someone disagrees with your video or you know more than one video and they leave you a comment, that is equivalent to a review. Someone is reviewing a product that you put out. If it's media, just a video, then the review is the comment. So if you want to translate that over to Gabby Hanna publishing a crap book full of bad poetry, sending it to someone who reviews books, and then not liking the review. It's as simple as that. It has turned into a hot mess disaster. And Jimmy Snow decided to throw himself in the middle of it without properly educating himself on Rachel Oates and her integrity, her demeanor. I have no problem with Rachel. One of his big issues in the beginning of the video that he said was that Rachel Oates put out a tweet saying, is it possible for poetry to make me physically ill? And he had such a freaking problem with this. He like, you know, took it as the worst thing ever. Who cares? It's really not that deep. It's not that serious. It's absolutely ridiculous. You know, he acts like uh, Rachel Oates was like, yeah, Gabby is a ugly dumbass who whatever. No, she said, is it possible to make poetry to make me physically ill? Who cares? So because of that tweet, you're going to send her, you know, a textbook message 
and try to persuade her into doing something different. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it operates. I think it's very, it was a very bad choice for him to insert himself into this. However, whenever I see this kind of stuff, I always say certain situations are going to come out about YouTubers and it will show you their huge amount of integrity or the small little bit that they don't have and they were fooling everyone the entire time. Now, I don't think that his is on this grandiose level, but I do think that this is a very bad look and it is making people second guess other content that he's put out and this is not going to be good for a while. I, I, I do believe, you know, the internet has a short-term memory, unfortunately. However, for that short term, people are going to be upset and there will be a larger group of people who leave and never look back because they will find someone else who isn't doing this and they will begin to enjoy that person's content and it is what it is. So is it that serious? No, it's definitely not that serious, but I do believe that, um, you know, this entire situation has been blown way out of proportion. The situation with Rachel giving the bad review has blown way out of proportion. As far as Gabby Hanna being problematic, everyone needs to be talking about that. I think that she is, um, it, it's way past being problematic. You know, with the whole Jesse Smile situation, Gabby is so far beyond problematic. I, I don't even know what what you would categorize that as. She's not someone that I would want to be associated with in this lifetime or any other lifetime. So for him to sit up on his channel and say that he is still uh, supporting Gabby says a lot about his character and it's not someone that I want on my subscription feed. So for now, that's going to be the end of this video. Please be sure to leave your thoughts down below. I really want to know what you guys think. Are you on the side of you're still going to, do you subscribe to Jimmy? First of all, if you do, are you sticking around? You don't care about this? Um, you know, do you disagree? I think a lot of people based on the comments that I've seen, the big takeaway is you threw yourself into something you didn't research and you're still supporting Gabby Hanna. And those two are a big, big problem for most people. So anyway, that's gonna be it for today. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.